What's up guys, how's it going? Mike the Tech here and welcome to another Play Canvas tutorial. In our last tutorial, we made our character jump, but you could technically cheat and keep on pressing jump a bunch of times and, and just fly up into the air. So we want to fix that and set up a new way to detect if the uh, player is touching the floor before you can jump. So let's go ahead and do that now. Um, let's go ahead and go into our script for our ball. And we're going to open our movement script. And here we need to define a new event for a collision. So we're going to add some space in our initialize property. And just like we did for this.app.keyboard.on, we're going to do for our collision. So this dot uh, entity. So the object we're connected to collision dot on. And then for this event, we're going to use collision start. And then um, this dot, oops, we don't need parentheses right there. This dot on on collision start, our name of that. And we're using on collision start instead of, um, there's two other ones that we can use. Uh, contact and collision end because collision start um, fires wince, wince, when two um, colliders touch. Um, but if we use contact, it would happen every time they're touching. Like if it rolls by, it's going to, for every single point of contact it makes, it's going to run it again, which is super unnecessary. We just need it to happen once when the collision starts. We don't want to use collision end because that's going to um, fire when two collisions separate. So when we jump, it's actually going to turn off so it might not work so we need to use collision start for that um, and then the third one we're just going to type in this literally this and then a little semicolon at the end so in this um, or we need one more thing actually here we, we're, we're gonna put this dot can jump equals one. So as soon as the game starts, you can jump. That's our variable that we're just making up right now. You can name it whatever you want, but um, remember what you named it. And uh, we're going to call it can jump and set it to one. If it's set to one, you can jump. If it's not set to one, then you can't. <coughs> so um, when this new collision event is fired, um, we're going to use the following script. And I wrote this earlier, but I'll explain what it does. I'm just going to copy it so it, you guys don't have to watch me suffer through trying to type back and forth and look back and forth. Um, but we're choosing our script name dot prototype dot on collision start, which is the event we um, made right here on collision start. And we attribute the result um, as Whoever it collides with, that's what the result is going to be. So the other body. Uh, and then we make an if statement that says if result dot other dot rigid body. So if it contains a rigid body attached, then it's going to let you jump. So if um, a projectile, for example, hits your character um, or you run into a coin, it's not going to reset this. But if it runs into the floor or another hard object that has a rigid body attached, then it is going to detect it. If it does detect it, then you're going to set can jump back to one because it means you landed on the floor. Now, we need to actually set up some um, uh, logic to determine whether we can jump or not in our event down here now. So we're going to change, uh, we're going to remove one equal sign from here. And we're going to put two and signs here. So if uh, the space key is pressed and this dot can jump and it is case sensitive so make sure you you type it in right i almost typed it with a capital is equal to one then we can jump right and um yeah if it's equal to one you can jump and then we need to set can jump this dot can jump to zero so once we jump up it sets it to zero and we can't jump again because it's not meeting that first um condition until we hit another rigid body. Uh, so let's go ahead and try this. So we could jump. And if I press it really fast, I still can't make it jump higher. If I hold the button down, 
it actually triggers a jump every time. And it does kind of get a little bit higher because of the momentum you get from falling, but it never lets you actually cheat. So we've officially fixed our jump mechanic in the game. Uh, so that's fun. In the next video, we should... Let's see, as a little assignment, maybe you guys can can do some um, editing in the editor itself to get some practice. Um, I know it's weird to have an assignment, but I'm a teacher. That's what I do. Uh, so maybe add some walls. You can do that by copying an existing plane, for example, making sure you don't have it nested, and then moving it wherever you want to move it. And you can adjust the uh, rotation by using the rotate tool. So we can rotate it this way. And if you want to get it perfect, you can adjust the numbers here on the right side. Set that exactly to 90 so it's perfectly flat like that. You can adjust the size of them. So for example, if I wanted to scale it, I could lower it down to uh, maybe half of what it normally is, so 0.5. And then you can also make it snap to objects. So you can make it snap whenever you go. So that's also useful if you want to use that. I kind of like the freeform mode to place the object for the first time. And then um, I'll use snapping to duplicate it. And then um, place it, for example, right next to another object. So if I wanted the, the wall to continue this way, I could just keep on adding them that way. So that's really useful as well. Um, that wall will do wonders for helping the player reach the end of the goal. Because they can't, <laughs> I was going to say they can't fall off, but they could definitely fall off still, uh, as I'm showing here. But it helps them um, keep from falling off the edge over here. It makes it a little bit more fun. You can add these types of assisters in the early levels of your game and then remove them on the later levels to make it more difficult to give more of a progression style system in game design. Uh, but yeah, uh, let me know if there's any other objects you'd like to see me add. Maybe we can add some coins and collectibles. That would be fun. And a user interface would be nice too. Uh, thank you so much for watching and have a great day. Peace. What? You've never heard of stream savers, and you thought PewDiePie was the only YouTuber to make a game? I made a game too, and it's called Stream Savers, and it's available for pre-order right now for $9.99. And that's a great price!